Good evening, YouTubers. T.O. here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight with some more lake breakdowns. Still waiting for Steve to get out of the shop, so I'm just going to keep pumping these things out as much as I can because as soon as I get my boat back, I am not going to be sitting right here. I'm going to be on the water for sure. So tonight, we're going out to Graham, Texas, northwest of Fort Worth, about five miles north of Graham. There's a little bitty lake called Lake Graham, believe it or not. Surprising, huh? We're going to break that one down tonight. Let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we can find. Here we go. First things first, every time we break down a lake, we always go out and check out the Texas Park and Wildlife site, kind of see a little bit about the lake, kind of read about it, figure out what it's all about, especially if we've never been there. And this is another one of those lakes that I've never been to. This one is located on the Salt Creek in Young County, five miles north of Graham, like we talked about, right off of US 380. Uh, looks like the maximum depth is 45 feet, and your surface area is only 2,444 acres. There's really two different lakes here. There's Lake Edelman, which is over here, and there's Lake Graham. But when I uh, do this breakdown, I'm just going to do it all as Lake Graham. I think it's all one part. They sounds like they may have opened this section up later on, um, or <clears throat> sometime, you know, sometime in the past they had opened that up after they had opened up Lake Graham. So, uh, anyways, just wanted to go over that. The uh, couple other things down in here: largemouth bass looks like it's good for this fishery. Also got crappie and catfish. So that is always good. It says that this is actually a hot water discharge lake or a power pant lake, but it does it only runs when it's needed. So it's not consistent enough, um, but it does say that that's over in the Edelman portion of the reservoir. So if you want to go around uh, warmer water or if that power plant is running and discharging that water, you definitely want to go over in that area. So that's really all I could find from the Texas Park and Wildlife site. There were, it was no uh, contour maps uh, for this lake, and there also wasn't any type of Texas Parks and Wildlife fish attractors or anything like that. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over, and let's jump into Google Earth, and let's show you what I found. Here we go. So here we are on Lake Graham. You can see that we've got quite a few quite a few points, really, for, a, for as small of a lake as this was, or really, I guess, two lakes combined. Still, we're able to find uh, quite a few stuff. So if you look over here on the left-hand side, let me expand this a little bit so, I can, so you guys can see it. We've got Lake Graham over here. We've got the offshore hotspots. Uh, I'll kind of walk these through these guys for you. So we got our offshore hotspots here. Uh, I'll go over those with you. I don't think I'm going to go out to Navionics on this one. I'm just going to kind of show you what I've labeled here. And if you want to match these up to Navionics, you definitely can and see what I was talking about. But a lot of this stuff we're going to be able to see uh, through Google Earth. So we're going to talk about the offshore hotspots. We're also going to talk about creek channels. So you can see here, we've got a couple different creek channels. Got some pretty nice ones up there. Got a few in this area. This wasn't really necessarily one of those creek channel lakes, you know, not like it was a few weeks ago when we were talking about Sam Rayburn. Um, this is definitely not, not one of those lakes. But creek channels are always good, so you always want to go check them out. Uh, we've also got rocks and debris, so a lot of different areas where the, the rock was maybe a little bit different on this lake. You're going to see this lake has a lot of rock. Uh, but I went ahead and hit those transition areas or those high percentage areas uh, that had rock on them. We've also got a lot of ramps that are out here as well. And then finally, we get into the ponds and the ditches. So there were different uh, little areas where we can see where there are ponds when we drew the water back. So we'll talk about those as well. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. I'm going to start over here on the Lake Edelman side. We'll cover this lake and then we'll move over here to the, uh, to the west side and we'll cover that side. So when you're coming up in here, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go over here and move this over. And in fact, I may even be able to close that sidebar completely out. So now we can see everything so much better. All right, so let's go ahead and start up here. The first thing I want to do is I want to show you the different timelines. So we're going to go up here. This is 2021. So this is kind of how it would look today. Um, but we're going to draw this back to 2014. That seemed to be one of the best images I could find on this lake. So we're going to draw that back. 2015 looking pretty good to you. I think it's going to be the same image. So this is kind of the best image that I could find to where I could see the creek channels. I could see other things that were going on so where we could really mark some stuff. So you can see here the Flint Creek is coming in through here. That creek channel is completely marked for you guys. When we scoot into here, you can see there's an old pond dam back here. 
these things sometimes are little secret jewels to fish around. So fish off the back side of this pond, right back here. Also fish over here as well, but this back side can produce pretty good. You've got some debris down in here. So if I zoom in here, you'll see there's some tires and junk like that. Looks like there might also be some stumps or some standing timber right in this area. So definitely check it out. I mean, if you look at it when we uh, when we move it up, it's it's not nearly as obvious. You don't even know that that pond is there. So uh, check out these spots. I think they're going to be good for you guys. I'm going to keep moving up. So as we move up here, we've got some additional rock. Um, this, you know, there's a lot of rock on this lake, but this one particular spot, these are some really big, chunky rocks, and they're kind of out all by themselves. So anytime I see something that like that that's different, that's just different from all the rest of the surroundings, I always fish it, and then if I'm doing a lake breakdown for someone, I'm always going to mark it. So that's one of the cases there with those rocks. You've also got an old foundation down here, or maybe it's an old road or a boat ramp. I can't tell what it is, but you can kind of see the concrete around it, and then some rocks right up there off the end of it. And also you got all the standing timber too, so that's always good to fish around. Now as we move down uh, through that channel, we come over here. A couple things over here to look at. This looks like it was an old pond. <clears throat> possibly, but I couldn't really see the whole outline of the pond. So I didn't mark it as a pond. Instead, I just marked it as rock. So I put rock here. I think really anywhere on this outside edge is probably going to be pretty good for you guys. Maybe even fish down in here around this power pole. Uh, power pole, this, this, shoot, I can't even talk, electric pole uh, that's there. Or you could also go over here and check out this because this is on like its own little hump out here with some rock on it as well. So all kinds of good stuff to look and you know what even if you're in here fishing and i just noticed it this kind of makes its own little point right in this area don't don't check that one off maybe if you're out here fishing if you're having any luck out here off these three points maybe pull in just a little bit and see if they're relating to that as well you never know they definitely could all right so i'm going to keep moving down here we've got some additional things going on here you know again we're seeing lots of rock on this bank line so um, it's not that it's not that I'm just pointing out there's rock there, but if you look here, this is very unique. It's got a little unique pile all by itself. Maybe even have a little timber or a lay down close to it. There's something going on out here as well. Plus, you've got this little point that sticks out from everything else. That again looks like a high percentage area that you would want to check out. Also, this area back here, I put it marked it for a pond. This pond is interesting. Look at all these rocks around this pond. Now it's wild because at least it's wild to me because I don't live in, in this area uh, of Texas. But, you know, to see all those rocks, you know, I kind of have a visual, visualization of what it would look like um, if I were to go there and fish it. And when I raise the water up, that is not how I would have pictured it. Um, I would not have pictured that section to look like that with all that green around it and really not really seeing any kind of rock visually if I was driving by that. Now, obviously, this looks like it may have been flooded during this time. But you would have no idea that there's an old pond here with some really good rock and a real good trench right in that area. So go check it out. If anything, it was just cool looking at it from the uh, from the Google Earth standpoint, because what it looks like here and what it looked like a minute ago, <laughs> they don't look anything alike. Um, all right. So moving on down, we talked about those rocks. I'm going to keep coming down this channel and I'll just kind of go back and forth. So on this side, we've got another pond that's right in here. Guys, these pond dams are money, so definitely fish these pond dams, insides and outsides. You've also got another rock that's right here. And if we move over to the left-hand side, parallel to where we were there, uh, or horizontal from where we were, you've got another rock pile right in here. And a little hard spot right in there as well. Something may be going on off this point, but I couldn't tell, so I didn't mark it. But you've definitely got like an old roadbed. It looks like an old roadbed coming right through here. So I didn't see too much from that roadbed until you get over here where my icon is. And here it almost looks like this roadbed is lined with rock, at least down to about that area in there or somewhere right in that area. So check out this right here. That looks, looks kind of promising there. You've also got a good transition area there where the rock stops and that dirt starts. So uh, always look for those transition areas. I probably missed a ton of them. I didn't mark any of them on this map, but look for those. If you see where that rock goes, um, where it's really heavy and then all of a sudden it just stops, then you need to go scan around that area right where that break line is and see if that continues out deeper into the water. And if it does, those can be some really good hot spots to fish around. All right, so I'm going to keep moving down here off these two little points. You've got some rock. You may even get some current coming through this little channel. 
So, you know, just right in here, that's going to be a good spot to look at uh, anytime. I want to go back because I don't know if my uh, if my offshore stuff's actually showing up on here. I don't think it is. It must be because of the date that we're looking at. Oh, yeah, because of the date we're looking at. So, all right. So I'm going to go back. Sorry for the confusion there. Go back and let's go back to 2014 or 15, wherever we were. And let's look and see what else we have here. So, uh, again, we've got a couple different points right in here. So I marked those as rock. And you've got another one right in there for rock. So that really covers us, I think, right here. We've got a drop. So if we look right in here, you'll notice that uh, – let me see if I can get a better image. I thought, that, I thought I had a little better image than that one, but maybe not. That might be the best one I have. But you'll notice there's a really good drop right in here. You can almost see the shade from it. So check this out. It almost looks like a almost like a pond. I don't think it is. I think it's just the way the structure is. But just check this out right in here, especially right on that back side and right off that tip. So I think that could be a good spot for you to, to, uh, to look at for sure. All right, so then I'm going to keep moving up here. That covers us for Lake Edelman. So now I'm going to move over to the west, and we're going to talk about Lake Graham. So let's just start right here at this channel. And we will move our way up and we'll finish back down here at the end. So moving right here, obviously, the first thing you see here is you've got some really good rock out in this area right off that point. And again, because that's such a nice, narrow little channel right there, you could possibly get some current running through there. And that's going to get those bait fish collected up in these areas. So that's definitely a good area to look. Moving on up here, a couple things on this bank line. There wasn't too much. Uh, there is a lot of rock along this bank line, but these are the specific areas that I was telling you about. So see how it's kind of just scattered, and then all of a sudden it's really heavy right here on this point. So check out that point. Maybe you'll look at this one. This one's the same thing. It gets really heavy just right in this area. And then again, it's just going to get scattered out again. We're not seeing too much. Um, as we move further back over here, there's some more rock over here. We'll go ahead and get rid of the toolbox for you, even though it's not really bothering us. So we're full screen here. Right here, if you look at it, this is what I was talking about. See how you have uh, just dirt, mud, whatever. You may have a little bit of scattered rock in here. And then all of a sudden, it's a really heavy pile. Well, if this continues out in here, this that line, wherever that line is, it might be right there. Wherever that is, that's going to be a good spot to look. So definitely look on those spots. Those transition areas are big. You'd have the same thing on this side, too, somewhere. But... Uh, this, this side here on the south side looks like you'll have a pretty good defined line. All right, you got a boat ramp back there, so check that out. Up in here, you've got uh, a pond. So if you move in here, you know, this looks like it doesn't even look like a pond, right? It kind of looks like it's totally out of the water, but I'm telling you it's because the water's drawing down so much. This looks like a juicy spot to be fishing around. Lots of rock. The pond dam is actually created by rock. If we pull it up and we move it to 2016 or 2017, you really don't have any idea that that pond is right there. Um, probably even screw up your motor <laughs> hitting some of that rock in there if you're not careful. But that right there, that looks like a really good spot on this lake. All right, so I'm going to draw that back. And we're going to keep moving on up. Next thing I found was up here. There's another pond. You can see the outline of it <clears throat> right through here. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the pond dam. And then on the right hand side, you'll see all this different rock. I'm thinking right in here where that pond dam is, that's going to be kind of your high percentage area where they're probably going to collect to them inside or outside. I'm not sure, but definitely along that pond dam and right here, right there in that entryway where, where it funnels in the funnel into that, into that pond. Now, there is a hump out here. There could be shell beds out here on this hump or something, but I don't see anything out here. So I didn't even mark it. Uh, moving over here, we've got some rock off these points. I like how they jet out. And getting back in here might be a little bit tricky. Uh, but if you can get back in here, these could be good spots to look at. So you've got a good point there. Another good point there. Back here, you've got some debris and some rock over here on this left side. And then, of course, you know, another ramp and some more rock. What I really wanted to show you was this area right in here. <coughs> Excuse me. So first thing is this creek. So this creek runs down. Pretty good, you know, it has a pretty good uh, run that comes down. I kind of lost it right in here. I'm not sure where it's at. I just made up my own little creek channel there based on what I was seeing, and then it kind of floods out. So you've got the creek channel right there that's pretty well defined. 
But what you also have on this other side right here is you've got this, this creek channel on this side or this ditch. I called it a ditch. Um, and so pretty much that's why it's, it's, it's highlighted yellow like that. But that ditch, you can see if you look, you can see the shade there that that ditch is providing. So that looks like it could be really good, a real good drop off. It's close to a creek channel. It's back. It's protected. All of that stuff. This actually looks like it might even be an old pond right back in here. Maybe that's where the pond is actually flowing out back into the creek channel. Anyways, this area in here looks looks pretty good. Uh, and then you kind of have the same thing right in here. You've got some kind of like an old wall or something underneath the water. But again, you, if you look at it closely, you'll see the dark, the black. That black is the shade that's being created from whatever that is, that ledge or whatever that is that's there. So check that out. Let's go ahead and look at that. I just always like looking at these spots when they're actually uh, at full pool. So let's look at it when the water's up. So you pull in here when the water's up, you're seeing a totally different image, right? You're not getting that image that we just saw when that water was pulled down. So that's why I think these things are so helpful because now you can go out here. If you come out here and you hit that pocket, you're going to know what's out there. Um, and, you know, have a pretty good understanding of what you need to be fishing. Whereas if you didn't have this and you weren't able to pull that down, you would literally have to go out here and graph all of this area in here just to see what we're seeing here within just a couple of minutes. So hopefully you guys are taking advantage of this. This really does make fishing a lot simpler for you. And I hope it's helping you guys out. So we talked about the rock that was there. We also come up here, not really a creek channel up there, but there is some rock over here. So if you look here, there's rock just right in this area. There's not any anywhere else, just right here. So look at that area right there. You've also got some standing timber. Uh, again, it's going to be tricky to get back there. I don't see really any good paths to get back there. But if you can get back there, that looks like that could be a good spot to fish. As I move further up here, just a couple of ramps. So we got a couple of ramps. This, this bank line didn't look too promising to me. Uh, several different ramps that were in that area. You did have a little rock that was right in here. So you could check out that pretty good little point going on right in there. Again, look at all this timber. You're going to have to be super careful getting back in here. It looks like your path's right there, but I'm not, I'm not willing to make you a path because I'm still seeing stumps. But I'm thinking if you cut right through there, that's actually going to be your path to get back to that, that creek channel that's back there. So maybe get, get this map for me. Uh, you know, the KML files over there in the description. So you can check that out or you can always go out to simplisticfishing.com. You can get the digital file, and which will also give you the, uh, the format for your graphs. You can just plug this into your graphs and you'll be on your way. So as I as we move up here, let's keep moving. Uh, I had a couple things I wanted you to check up here. Rock right here, the very heavy rock right off this point. You got another ramp in here. This side here, I, I didn't know what to label it, so I just labeled it as check it because clearly it's different. You've got three little almost humps or drops or ledges. You got one, two, three right here. This looks really good, guys. I would definitely fish around this area. Really good drops, really good areas for them to hide behind and ambush bait and things like that. So you, these are always key areas that you really want to look at and see if you can locate the fish there. My guess is, you know, depending on the time of the year, if it's right now, it's October 13th, I'd probably go back there and check that out, see if they're hanging out around that or if they're hanging out here around this point. So as we move further up here, some rock off of this point, again, getting the heavy, heavy, heavy timber, another boat ramp right in there. So I'm gonna pull back and we're gonna go back to that creek channel we were just talking about. And again, if we zoom in, you can see where you can kind of maneuver your way back in here. And once you get to here, you're kind of good. You need to, I need to pull that back. I think that's more, your creek channel is more right in there, but this tells you kind of closely where that creek channel is gonna be. Um, I can't see it exactly out here because it's not shallow enough, but I can kind of tell by the tree line where that creek channel is. When I get back in here, I'll really be able to tell. But the main thing that right here that I want you to be aware of is this point. So this point basically has a creek channel swing coming up against it. So this creek's going to come down here like this, and then it's going to swing hard right against the edge of this point. And you hear people talk about channel swings all the time and bends. This is a prime example of a really good spot to be able to locate some fish. You'll notice here too that the water from that creek channel swinging up against the, uh, the land like that has washed away all the dirt and has created all that rock and exposed that rock. So you know this is a good spot to fish for sure. Now, the only thing I did from there is I just marked that creek channel all the way up. So if you wanted to fish that creek channel, you definitely could. You could just follow it all the way up, follow my lineup, and that's gonna keep you in the center of the creek channel 
for the most part and get you fishing right in the, the right areas. Now that's some shallow fishing. Not sure I'd go up there and, and Steve, but if I had a, a little aluminum boat or something like that, uh, or a kayak, I would definitely go up in that area and see what I could find. Now, as we move down from that side, uh, a couple things I want you to see here, another creek channel back in here. This one looks like you may have some weed lines defined by that creek channel. If that's the case, those are money. Um, so definitely look at that. I didn't see this. Not sure if that was rock or not, but you might want to check this out. A little rock kind of hidden in there. Missed it the first time. You've also got some rock in here. Some more rock here as well. And again, these are areas close to that creek channel. So you know these are prime spots. One right there, one right there. Uh, and then let's keep moving on down. As we move down to the next one, just got another little creek that came out. This one's kind of weak, but it does have a little drop that's been created. You can see it right here. So that little ledge right in that area. And it kind of creates one right here too, this little bend that's right here. So check those spots out. I don't know how prime that's going to be, but at least it's got some drops and stuff like that. It does look somewhat interesting. Got a little island out there. I didn't see too much around the island to mark. I mean, I don't know. I was trying to sit here and look at it and say, okay, if I were to approach this island and I could only fish maybe a quarter of it, what quarter percent, what quarter of the island would I fish? I think that's going to depend on the season and the wind. Um, you've got a little bit of a flat here off the side of the island, so they could collect out here and just hang out and munch and stuff like that. Or they could come over here and be in more deeper water and push the shad right up against the rock. So Hard to say what the best part of this island would be. I just didn't see anything on the island that would really attract me to want to go out there. Maybe that tip there, because it looks like you might have a break there, but you'd have to go through a forest of trees just to get out there. All right, so I'm going to keep moving down. Got some more rock over here. Obviously, you got rock all along the bank line, but these are those specific areas, right? Those things, those areas that are unique. They're different than all the rest of the areas there. That's where these two points come out with some pretty heavy rock. You've also got a boat ramp down in this area. Really heavy rock right in here for sure. Uh, then down here, I marked this rock. Now look, everything's the same, right? Everything's the same, everything's the same, everything's the same. And then poof, all of a sudden you get something that's different, right? <clears throat> for whatever reason, they cleared all the rock off the top of this, off the top of this, uh, you know, the land right here off the bank. And the only time you get to rock is when you get down here. Well, that's a perfect area for those fish to chill out hang out in, smash stuff up against the, the rocks and things like that. So look in that area where it says rock. I think that's going to be your high percentage area, at least on that bank line. All right, moving down here, just seen a lot of more of that rock and stuff. Didn't have anything too special uh, to show you guys there. Let me make sure we're showing all of our points here, though, because I want to make sure that I don't end up missing something here for you guys. So I'm put my sidebar back on, just making sure we got it all. <clears throat> all along. I'm going to keep moving on. As we move down here, the next thing we found was a pond. So right here on this dock, and this is interesting. So you see this dock right here. This is 2021. If we move it back to 2014, go back in here. Now all of a sudden, you've got a pond that's right underneath this dock. It's like they built the dock right on the pond on purpose. But that's a really good dock. You know that's going to be a good dock, and it's got a nice little funnel coming out of here as well. So check that out. I'm sure that guy loves the fact that I highlighted his dock. Uh, and then down here, we've got another pond. So check out that pond dam. That one looks like it could be interesting. And if you look here, this yellow, that means that's a ditch, right? It's not a creek channel, but it's a ditch. You can see a drainage coming through here. But that ditch has really caused some pretty good erosion. So you've got some pretty good drop in there, a pretty good channel that's been created. Uh, from that ditch. So check that out. Also down in here, you got some debris that's over here off this point. You've got a tire that's over there. If we move over to the other side, you've got another little finger point that comes out here with some rock on it. But look at this rock pile. This one's like someone intentionally went out and grabbed a whole bunch of rocks and put them in one spot. So look at that rock pile right there. That one's very unique to everything else that's around here. And then moving over here, coming off of this point, I just liked how this one came out and, you know, the rock was pretty heavy all in this area, but then it kind of got scattered and light, and then all of a sudden it got really heavy again, just right in this area. So that's why I marked that one. So that one's more rock. Uh, we got some more rock in this area again. Kind of the same thing. You got a little point coming out. So they always love those little, those little areas. So check that out. Also out here, I like how it's getting scattered rock out here. This is a main lake point, but 
I want to know what's out here. So check this out where it says check. Check that and see what that is. That could be more rock further out in here. That could be a brush pile. I can't tell what it is. Obviously, this area in here is going to be a good area to fish around this rock. But if you can pull out a little bit further, there may be something golden right there that we just can't see. Then as we move down another ramp, you got some more rock that's back in here, right off of this little point, some more rock in here. Just kind of marking those spots that are different, right? As you get back in here, this one's way different. This one, of course, you can see there's really not hardly any rock around this area, and then all of a sudden you get piles of them. So you got a good pile right here. And let's move that up. Let's go ahead and move that up to 2017. See, it's going to look totally different. Um, so just trust the marks that you see on that graph. And then over here, you've got another point that's got some pretty good rock. And right here, you've got some pretty good rock as well. Then it kind of stays consistent until you get over here, and then you start getting really close to a little transition area going on, probably right through here somewhere. So I went ahead and marked the rock there because you got a good pile. <coughs> but also look for the transition and see what you can find there. I'm having a heck of a time recording today. I just keep getting choked up. All right, next we got uh, some rocks that are right in here, some more rocks in that area as well. Got a boat ramp back here, another boat ramp, some more rock right here off of this point. So if you zoom in here, you'll see this. It kind of makes like a little hump or a ridge there. It might even be rock. Can't tell what it is. I labeled it as rock, but not sure. Got a couple more ramps here. And then as we get off to the side right over here, you'll notice like all of a sudden there's just this rock pile that's all, all out there by itself. So I went ahead and marked that one. You know that's going to be a good spot. Very unique to that area for sure. I didn't mark these two humps. Um, probably should have, but just be aware those humps are out there. I don't see much on those humps other than they're just a gravel top, but maybe the entire the entire uh, floor line or the, the, you know, the gosh dang it, I can't even talk today, but basically the bottom of the lake is uh, is all rock. I'm not sure, but if not, check these out. These are two little rock piles that are out here. It looks like it's a muddy bottom, but again, seeing these rocks, it's hard to tell. But anyways, check that out. I'll try to start, try to stop stumbling here and get through this thing. We've also got another pond that's back here. Got another ramp that's over in this area as well. Not a ramp, but some rock piles outside of those docks. So really kind of just dirt, not much going on, and then a pretty decent rock pile there. That dock's got some pretty good rocks around it too. Uh, and then moving over here, didn't see too much that looked that interesting to fish in this area, except for this pond right here looks good. So you got a good pond dam right on this side and that side, and you got that little funnel that's gonna come right through there. So check out those ponds. You've also got some additional rocks stick out right here, like a little point. Got your ramp, got some more rocks in here again, you know, dirt, 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 and then finally get some rocks. You know, those are good areas. Down in here, uh, just some scattered rock. There's a little scattered rock pile right there that I marked for you guys. Some debris that was over here off of this little point. Not sure what that is. I think it's wood, but it's hard to tell. And then if you look at this point, again, not a lot going on, right? Some of these docks are interesting because they all have like these mountains of rock that lead to them. So, um, if that rock would go out a little bit further, I'd say definitely fish it, but check out those docks that are like that, but also look at this point. So dirt, 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 dirt. And then finally you get some rock. So check out that point. Let me see what else is back here. We get back in here. We've got some more rock. And then I wanted you to check this thing. This looks like an old culvert or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyways, before I judge that, look, that looks really good right there, by the way. Uh, as we move in here, this looks like an old culvert maybe. Can't tell what it is, but it looks like a good place to fish for sure. Again, if I move the water up, uh, that's going to be submerged. So you know that that should be a good spot to fish around. And then as we move further back here, we just got all these creek channels that I marked for you guys. So you got a creek channel here, creek channel here, and then you got a road bed that's coming across that you can see that's what that one line is. And then moving further over here, we got a pond. This one was kind of hidden, right? You couldn't really tell. That this was there it almost didn't look like a pond but if i could remove that orange which i don't think i can without messing everything up but if i could move that you would see that there's a little bitty ledge going on right in that area right there so look at that see if you can find anything on that pond dam or relating to that pond dam we're getting pretty close to getting back up here by the uh by the power plant we got some additional rock that comes out here i did like this one because it's kind of like its own little island out here so check out that one 
lots of riprap going on all the way through this bank line. And then, of course, this is all fenced off, so you can't get to it. And then up here, uh, you've got some additional rock that's right in here. Some more rock in here. And then two more ramps, and then I think we're back up to here. We've got two spots here I want to show you. Look at this pond. This pond looks really good. It's got some pretty good pond dam right here. You can see it's kind of blown out. But on the edges of these pond dams, it's got the rocks. So I, I say this is this area right here, probably going to be a pretty good area to take a look at. So that covers us on all of our Google Earth waypoints, all the stuff that we had there. The last thing we really have is really just to talk about the offshore stuff. Um, so let me go ahead and I'm going to uncheck everything else. And we're just going to talk real quick about these offshore spots. So in order to see these offshore spots, because I brought them in from Navionics, we have to be in 2021 to see them. So I'm just going to run through them really quick. I know this video is getting kind of long. So I'm going to run through them really quick and just kind of show you what we found here. So right in this area, you've got a little drop right outside of that, uh, that creek channel that's coming in there. So check that out. Down here, of course, you got the point we talked about. There's another underwater point in here. Uh, this is where that ledge was that we talked about. So you got that underwater rock point that was there. As we move up here, I talked to you guys about fishing this outside of this, right in this area, fishing that area. There's an underwater point that comes out pretty far. If you look at the contour, that's going to take you right out here and give you a little bit of a ledge. So I want you to check that out too. As we get further up here, you've got a couple more underwater points. All these that say points, those are just underwater points that come out that have some type of a ledge. They're either a ledge that comes off and touches a creek bed or a creek channel, or they're just really good points with a flat top that have a pretty good break at the end of them. So you've got a drop here. So this is probably where that creek channel is coming up and getting really close to the side there. So you've got a drop there to take a look at. You've also got a couple more points and another drop there. You got a drop back in here from this creek channel that comes over here and kind of swings down a little bit here. And it creates a nice drop right where I put that icon at, right there. You've also got a point that comes out. This point actually comes out a little bit further. So you could check that out. Now as you get down here, you just see all those other things. Now we do have those humps that we talked about. So I guess we did mark them. I marked them as points, but really they're more humps. You got a couple more points in here. I'll probably fix that before I send that out to you guys. And we've also got other points that's out there. Then a couple more there. So just wanted to kind of show you, I know that was really high level from the offshore side, but go out and look at your Navionics or look at whatever you use for contour lines and you'll see why I marked those spots. But I think that's really going to help you. If you go out to our site, simplisticfishing.com, you can actually get the digital file for this or you can get the SD card for your graph and basically just plug it in. It imports the, the things in and you've got everything you need to be able to find the fish. Uh, depending on you know what it is that you're fishing for and what patterns are working that day. So I hope that's really helping you guys. If you have some lakes you want to suggest, send them my way, put them in the comments. I love breaking these things down. I've probably got a list of 20 of them to do, and I love adding more to it. So send them my way. And until next time, I hope you catch your PB. Take it easy, guys.